Well, I've come out just for and one o'clock, early start for me. Bit of fishing, it's late spring, brilliant warm weather, it's not summer. Here come the jets again, I am at Pondwood Fishery. It's gonna be noisy because it's on a flight path, so I'm doing, doing my little talks in between the jets coming over for Heathrow. It's rammed, absolutely. Can you blame them with the weather there is? So I'm just trying to catch some carp. I think it's pretty well, I've never fished this lake. It's a middle lake of Pondwood. Also, I've got some pellets. Now wait for this, I've got no maggots, no worms, no sweet corn, no nothing. I just got a bit of bread and a few pellets. And I mean a few pellets down here. And I've had a bit of a disaster. The famous chair looks like it's going to expire. And I've had to do running repairs by jamming my forceps through the bolt holes because I sat on it and went right over. Well, we can't be having that because that's my lucky chair. I won't catch anything if I don't get it right. So I've jammed my forceps down here in the bolt hole. Fingers crossed, I turn around and the little bit of fish movement I have seen, few on the top, mostly on the bottom, just a mass of mud coming up for these little micro pellet things that I've uh, just tossed a handful in the margins to see what they look like. Rigs. Match rod. I'm not going light, five pound line straight, straight through there, probably two pounds to five pound these carp. I've got uh, an antenna float there. It's quite sensitive. That one is rigged with a little shot at the bottom. I plumbed it up, it's not deep at all. The other rod is um, the same thing, 13 foot match rod, five pound line straight through, hook, a BB. I might even just toss this out, some lilies just coming through over there, because I say it's late spring, they're not up properly yet and just leave it and I can either touch ledger with it or I can watch the rod top because I could have bought a quiver tip of course I could but it's not a little point because a match rod is so fine in the tip it does pretty much the same thing let's see if we can get a hook up for you guys I'm going to start with bread first fish down there guys zooming along and just down there the mud is just clouded up. It's, even, it's a muddy colour as it is, but it's actually come up even more muddy. So they're definitely digging on the bottom. Just got a piece of bread flake pinched around the hook there. I'm going to swing it out. Roughly where I've seen those fish sort of stirring up the mud. Check the drag. Wow, it's tight. And somehow I don't envisage it'll be too long before they find it. This is just a regular commercial day ticket water. It's not some uh, golden ticket private syndicate, best friends with the boss type of thing, the old boys club. It's just a day ticket water. Anybody can pay and turn up here. They've got uh, a really good catfish lake. I'm not sure the catfish will bite in this uh, bright, bright warm weather, probably in the evening. Uh, they've got a match lake, they've got match sex, and so they've got a good bit of mixed fishing here as well. But this is, this is just the, what I call the easy lake, and I've come there. Goodness me, I hope it is easy. And fingers crossed we get to show you a fish, and I think I might also try a piece of slow sinking flake and take the shot off and fish it just under the surface, because way back there, you can see there's a little bit of movement. Well, enough with the float on the bottom, but um, one of the bailiffs just come round was telling me they bang, this is, look, this is, as I, you've got to check every single time you want to go fishing here, rules always change. Same goes for any fishery really, just check with the rules. Um, I can they've comparatively recently changed it, no ground bait, but you can, he said, use ground bait, like I've got here, this stuff, these sort of micro pellets, I think they call them, damp them down, you can use them in something like a method feeder or an open end feeder, so that's the only feed you can put in, but you can throw loose bread, loose bread in. And he said, pieces of bread flake on the surface, most of the action is going to be surface fishing. So I'm now going to change because I've got a, a number four shot taking that bread flake down. I've got a shot on the other, and I think I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to go floater fishing, put some bread out there, and see if I can target and hook a fish up that way. I'm not bothered about the ground bait, I can take it or leave it. But you know, do check when you go to different fisheries. So you can use damp micro pellet in a swim feeder or a method feeder individually you can't get a bucket of ground bait and shovel it in i haven't got 
a big enough bucket anyway to shovel the little bit I've got. But I've got a loaf of bread. Let's see if that loaf of bread can get me out of Skunk City. Just gonna get some thumbnail sized pieces. They're not big. Well, he did say they go to 15 pounds in there, but he said the 15 pounders don't get to the bake because there's so many two to four pounds, I guess. Break up about six or eight pieces of bread. If you want to throw them further, soak them first before you throw them out and they go a bit farther. But I'm trying to see with the wind behind me, it should drift the bait out. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to get eaten before it gets too far. Go on, let's get a hook out there. Right, the bread's come off the first cast. Well, I've got hooked up on the uh, on the waggler front out there again. There's a bit of a ripple coming now, so I'll explain something in a minute which you need to do with the ripple that's coming close towards you. It pushes the bait, your floating cross, towards your float, and you don't want that, you want it stretched if you can. So that as soon as they take it, you get, uh, you know, you get this indication on your float. Look, at the moment, only small fish, but they're all fun. There we go, regular size, fun size calf, as I call it, that sort of size. Uh, hopefully we pick a bigger one off before the day's done, or the afternoon. Oh, I missed that one. That was a fast bite, guys. One thing you want to do is make sure you don't, like I've got overhead trees here, don't strike up in the air, try and strike one side to the other. And of course over here is a tree, I don't want to go and miss the bite and carry on through and hit the blank, the rod blank hits the uh, tree, breaks the rod, or fractures it. Even worse if it fractures it because you don't know it's been broken until maybe you hook up a big fish. So I'm aiming for sort of a right hand strike here, just so I'm pulling it away from any trees, branches, not the striking at all. And we've got to float, what's the float. Then right around it, that carp was. Now I could have struck at that one. Oh, I looked at you in the float, and I felt, I felt the pull. <laughs> I could have struck at that one, but I'm likely to miss it. You know, because I don't physically see the, in this brown water, see the mouth close around the bait. If you just wait till the float goes, even if they're swirling around it, that little pause can make the difference. Got to get another bait on now. starting to use uh, <clears throat> bigger pieces of crust now. Feeding less often and just waiting is another way of doing it. You can feed a lot and very often you get a lot of small fish. And they're not big fish but they're all good fun. There's a little bit of a breeze and I'm finding that if I cast across the wind 
it keeps the distance between the float and the bait straight. Watch that turn. Tree. <clears throat> Watch the tree as well. You know when you're when you're when you're pulling back like this, if you've got a long rod like a 13 uh, foot match rod, just watch the tree as well. Well, <clears throat> I've had a bit of lunch and I've put some uh, bread, it's drifted in close. And they've come in close because I, I'm having a sandwich, I'm not casting out. So, you know, be aware that wherever that bread drifts to, and it did drift down right here, then uh, the fish could follow it in as well, and that's what they're doing here. And there we go, even got it on camera guys. So you can see how I waited for the float to go. And that uh, was looking through the lens of the camera as well. Small common, but gratefully accepted. Come on, Mr. Fish. He's digging away there. Here he comes. Oh, harder I'm pulling, the harder he's pulling back. And another one bites the dust. So not a bad session considering it's a bright, sunny, Day. Well, I think I might, uh, having had a load on the float now, I might as well have a go free lining, which I can either see the fish take, because I've got them in, in closer, starting to come up now. Chucked a load of bread in on the top, it seems to have got them going nuts. Let me show you. I do find they come around in batches actually, it goes quiet like it does now, and it's like one fish comes up and it gives the others the confidence to start feeding as well. Now you can also look for individually cruising fish. This water is quite coloured so it's tough seeing them but what you can see is there's a sort of V or weight going across the surface and if you just have a piece of free line crust and no shot, no float, no anything, and just try and get about two feet in front of it, there's a good chance, really good chance, they might get a take. Just scanning around now, watching this bread just drift down the right. They've just faded off it a little bit. They're swirling down the bottom here, digging around. But I haven't seen any big fish, you know, five, six, seven, eight pounders, anything like that yet. I think when I'm waiting for these fish to come on the inside piece of bread, I think I'll try a float further out because there's a lot of waking. If I get some of this fish that I can see a V waking, I'll try and get a picture of that so you beginners out there, you know what to look for. So this one, I had a shot on it, I'm just going to lower it down. I'm going to take the shot off, put a piece of crust on and see if I can actually spot a waking fish. Same thing, just a piece of flake like this. Sort of a bit bigger than a thumbnail size. Just like that. And it is actually normally better if you just give it a wet first, just for a second, two seconds. Oh, 
Oh, I missed that one, guys. There's a cruising fish. That was a cruiser. Let's see if he comes up. No. Trouble is in the colour water you don't actually see which direction they've turned off to if that makes sense. Well, having a bit of a, a break now. Bailiff came around and I said, was there any catfish come out of the catfish lake last night? He says, yes, a big one's a, about a 20, 22 and a 26. And uh, because I haven't fished here for a long time. What are they coming out on? Wait for this. <laughs> Babyville, that's a little ball of cheese. Babyville and Marmite. I mean, is there nothing in the supermarket those catfish won't take? Good sized fish though, 20 pounds. Out of there. I'm going to try float fishing close in, guys, really ultra close. You know, I'm seeing the mud come around. Well, that one came off, guys, but uh, just goes to show they were in the margin, so look for that coloured mud in the water that indicates that a fish are uh, stirring it up. I think I'm going to try that one again. Well, I've got one in close, guys. I've missed about three or four and done exactly what I said, don't do strike vertically. <laughs> Went up the tree but got it back. So no shortage of fish, even in close. They all do seem to be pretty much peas in a pod. There's a light aircraft place as well as Heathrow coming through here. So there's, uh, a lot of activity this afternoon. Oh, he's gone off. There you go, pinged off. Save me out of here. That's a piece of sinking flake just resting on the bottom. So I just got the bread flake pinched over the eye and quite, quite firmly squeezed, but not over the point of the hook. And then this number four shot is just enough to take it down a little bit. Now, if you do fish close like this, <laughs> I looked away and the float came up. Um, make sure you put the rod ring just before the V of the rest so it's got something to pull against because you can look away and in a millisecond the rod could go in. Get your drag set and I've got it on back one so it can unwind. Another plane coming in. We're on. Well, they certainly do chug around in there, these little fish. This is an absolutely ideal uh, later come if you want to learn how to float fish and perfect your technique. Or indeed ledgers, you could do ledgers as well here. Swim feeders. That's a small one. There he is. Nice little miniature one. I'd like one of those about 15 pounds. Well, I've had about 12 or 15 fish now, and obviously I just keep going and going and going. But being as they're pretty much all the same size, I've nearly had enough. Um, what you can do, is just if you want to do something different, is when they're in the margins like this, and even with a piece of crust. They come around, if you just want to relax, you can put a piece of crust on, not just here, this is any fishery that allows floating crust. If they come around the margins, and you just suspend it so there's no line on the water, and just rest it off your rod rest. Make sure it's on either back wind, a bait runner attachment, or the drag's looser. 
because it will be a crash strike, I can assure you. But it's a pretty exciting way of fishing, but of course you can actually lay the rod down and just put the piece of crust. In fact, I've had them take crust about an inch or so off the water. I've just been playing with them and kept it above the surface of the water and they come out to get it. So you could do it that way, or you can just let a piece of bread plate sink down to the bottom. I might try that actually before I go. And you can pick them up and that way you watch the tip of the rod like a quiver tip there. Here we go, we're on. That was with not one single piece of line on the water. Hopefully you've got that rod top going around and that's how you can catch them, old school, marching fishing, you used to do it at night on big fish obviously, but you can still have fun with these small ones. So if you're out there kids don't forget just lower it down on a match rod so it's just touching uh, the water with no line in the water at all, bingo.
That's a huge difference, isn't it? That is a huge difference. One is the dry type, and the other one, although it's a very fine uh, red reed wool, it's cotton wool. It's almost like an artificial feel to it in the way. It's, it's fine, isn't it? It's brilliant when it's made into things. It's kind of in the polar bear fur. So it keeps your body at body temperature. So if you're cold, it warms you up, and your body cools you down. Oh, it's interesting. So they, they just pull this out and use it for bird, bird nesting? Yeah? The birds are at them. That's interesting. They're supposed to go home because I was supposed to be having a flu jab this morning, so I said I'd go home yesterday. Oh, you're fine, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm back in the morning. I know. I know. That's it. So, so in the end, I couldn't get out anyway because it's so bad. Yeah, it's been terrible. I know. 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 I Alright. It's been terrible. Speaking of thirds. Are they like 303s, are they? Or bigger? I don't know what they are. 50s. And it wasn't too bad then, but since then, there have been so many people left. It's the cleanest tractors we're going to see today. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Cheers, yeah. Yeah. 